Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for attending this webinar. Today, the session is planned around indoor connectivity solutions. Uh, we have with us uh, Victor Dodd, one of our experts in DAS and small cell deployments. Victor, hi, are you with us? Hey, Esther, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, webinar session. Will be great. Okay, we'll be with you later on. Um, so uh, this is a live uh, webinar. Okay, uh, we will uh, devote a Q and A slot after uh, Victor and, and I presentation. Okay, so during the webinar, you can pose your questions uh, using the chat button that have to appear uh, at the bottom side of, of your screens, okay? Uh, uh, in the case that you are not able um, to pose uh, questions uh, on the go, uh, you can always address us your comments at the marketing at telecom.com email address. Okay, so um, from home, and to all of you, uh, let's get started. And let's start addressing the reasons why we do require indoor connectivity solutions. Uh, there are uh, some challenging scenarios, such as subways, uh, tunnels, skyscrapers, where uh, sometimes uh, they suffer from a shortage of coverage. Okay. These are unserved or underserved areas where the uh, outdoor uh, macro stations cannot give us the right level of signal that we need, okay? Tunnels and subways, uh, let's say underground uh, venues, uh, it's a very uh, clear um, area, no? Where the common sense says that it's difficult to have a good coverage, but there are other places as the skyscrapers that because of the building is very high, although they are very close to a macro station, they can have good coverage in the middle floors of the building, for example, and then they can experience a lack of coverage in the highest part of the building or the bottom floors, okay? That is sometimes where shops and um, uh, restaurants and other leisure areas are placed, okay? In the other hand, we have uh, what we call hyperdense areas, that suffer from a shortage of capacity, okay? Existing outdoor architectures cannot provide the right level of capacity that we need to give a good connectivity and a high quality system to all uh, people that attend these specific venues uh, in the day of an event, okay? Also, statistics show that we spend 90% of our time in buildings and almost 80% of the internet traffic happens indoor. That's why in order to guarantee the same good level of performance that we would have if being very close to a macro cell, we need to deploy very specific systems. Then let's say that these are uh, the implicit needs or the implicit requirements why this kind of uh, connectivity solutions are required. But most important is how these solutions will impact and will benefit all stakeholders. We have, we have to keep in mind that the venue increases its attractiveness when having a good connectivity system performing. So end users, they get engaged with venues uh, with, 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 with good connectivity. Also, uh, good connectivity increases the productivity of the workers, okay? Because we can make all processes more efficient. We have to remind as well that, for example, um, customers or uh, visitors of a shopping mall, they use their mobile phones during the purchase process, okay? So having a good connectivity will encourage them to come back again and will facilitate that they spend more money in our banks. So at the end, having a good connectivity increases the revenue and maximizes the efficiency in these venues, okay? So we have to keep in mind that connectivity is nowadays one of the key utilities. Okay then, 
once we have uh, addressed a little bit the why, now, Victor, I will give you the floor uh, for you to explain to our audience which kind of systems can be deployed in indoor facilities. Thank you, Esther. So, first of all, um, when we talk about what Cellnex is doing in terms of deploying in building solutions, <clears throat> let me try to explain. At the end, what we want, as Esther was saying, is to provide connectivity to the users. So we want the users to have a seamless experience, regardless if they are in an outdoor area, if they are on the street, or if they are in, a, in an in-building uh, environment or into, into a venue, in a specific venue like a stadium, even a small venue <clears throat> like a, any, any opera house or any, any concert hall, for example. Okay, so we want them to have this user experience. We want them to, to have connectivity, to share their experience with uh, anyone else. So to do that, the only way that we can do that is by using small cells, by deploying small cells or deploying DAS systems. As you know, uh, the networks are built from, from the macro traditionally. And as we are increasing the frequency, and now most of the networks in all countries are starting to deploy the new 3.5 uh, gigahertz frequency, um, the, the coverage area is reducing. So as, as, the, as the frequency is higher, the penetration from that signal into the buildings is also lower. So but that means that we need to deploy something in the buildings. We need to deploy a small cell or we need to deploy a dust system to provide coverage, but also in some cases to provide capacity, as this could be an example, a big stadium, for example. If we move to the next slide, um, this, is a, this is a schematic of a, of a dust system. On the left side, you can see the, what we call the, the base station hotel with the master unit. So in that space, normally that could be in, in, inside the building or it could be centralized in a different area. What we're doing, we're getting the signal from the different MNOs, from the three, four MNOs. We like to work in a multi-operator uh, environment. So when we're deploying one solution in one venue is because we want to deploy only one antenna, let's say, we don't want to deploy three antennas or four antennas, one per operator. We want to deploy one antenna for all operators. We want to deploy one antenna for all the frequencies that we are providing in that venue. So what we are, what we are doing is we're getting the signal from the MNOs, as you can see on the left part of this, uh, of this, uh, of this uh, slide. We're getting all the signals and then by using normally uh, fiber, optical fiber, we are transmitting that signal to different areas inside the building. So here you can see that we are using high power radios with a very uh, high power, like 20 watts, for example. Um, we, are in, we are introducing that signal into antennas, into directional antennas, into leaky feeders, for example, as that could be the example of uh, undergrounds or trains, for example, or tunnels. On some cases, we are using also uh, what we call low power solutions. Those normally are, um, are solutions in, in places where we need a lot of capacity. Then we are, uh, we are installing a lot of these uh, very low power solutions. And uh, we've got also mid powers which are uh, used to deploy in stadiums, for example. If we go to the next slide, here yeah, there's a schematic of uh, a deployment of a DAS system. As I was saying, in some cases, we are deploying that base station hotel centralized. So um, these solutions, these DAS solutions allows us to have a base station hotel and then to connect different buildings or different venues up to something like 20 kilometers. So that's a good example where we can deploy something centralized and then from there, we are connecting all the different buildings and just deploying once, okay? Uh, something which is important is that also at Cellnex, we are deploying multi-technology systems. We are deploying systems that is, are covering 
from the 2G, 3G, 4G, but also ready for 5G, ready uh, for the 3.5 gigahertz frequency, or ready for the 700 frequency in case of uh, places where we need a lot of penetration, uh, like tunnels, like undergrounds, or like car parts, for example. We are also uh, vendor agnostic, and one of the one of the key things that we are doing is that we don't have one solution for all all the venues. So what we are doing at Cellnex basically is we are taking the different segments, we analyze the needs of the landlord and the needs of the customers, and we are uh, deploying a solution, a specific solution, depending on those needs. Okay, so on this slide, for example, you can see on the top of the slide uh, uh, repeaters. So we are deploying repeaters. In the repeaters, uh, this is normally um, an extension of the coverage. I would say that it's also um, a low cost solution. We don't need to, we don't, we don't need the MNOs to deploy any, any BTS on that base station hotel that I was mentioning before. We are just taking the signal from the air and we are repeating that signal into the venue. As I said, this is not a capacity solution, it's a coverage solution. And uh, this is something that we are deploying in, in, uh, in tunnels or we're deploying in car parks, for example, where capacity is not a big demand because you don't have a lot of users, but coverage is mandatory, especially for the new services like smart cities or anything else. If we move to the next one, no, sorry, to the previous uh, previous slide, uh, Jordi, on the passive, um, that would be one step further. So imagine that, yes, we need capacity, then we need to install the BTSs from the MNOs on that base station hotel. But as the passive says, here we're not deploying any active equipment. It's just passive equipment. Again, it's a kind of low cost solution for uh, environments where not a huge demand of capacity is needed, okay, but it's more than the repeater. And then the next two active DAS and the digital DAS, in terms of the architecture, they are uh, very similar. We are deploying again all the BTSs in that base station hotel, and then through uh, fiber op optical fiber, we are connecting different radios in different locations around the buildings, around the venues or, as I said before, also in different venues at the same time. Main difference between active and digital is that in the digital, um, this is a, a, let's say it's a future-proof solution. So we've got, with the digital solution, we've got a lot of scalability of the system. So we can start deploying a system with low capacity and we can increase that capacity without doing any uh, manual intervention. The last one, virtual DXS, um, <clears throat> this is uh, again, similar to the digital, but in that case, we don't need any radio from the MNO. So we can deploy just the basement capacity connected directly to the, to the DAS. So the, the, that reduces the TCO of the MNO quite a lot. So if we move to the next slide, here we've got some examples. So IKEA is one of our, um, is one of our deployments. We are deploying repeaters in IKEA. As I said before, this is a local solution. We are taking the signal from a donor with a donor antenna from the air. We're taking the signal of all the MNOs and we are repeating that signal into the IKEA. Okay, that's, uh, that's what IKEA uh, was requesting us because they have some needs. They have an application also and they want to provide, as we said before, that connectivity to the users. On the next one, we've got, uh, that would be an example of a passive equipment. In that case, as I said, we are not installing any active equipment. What we are deploying in the base station hotel are the BTSs of the different MNOs, and we are combining all those signals by using combiners and then some splitters and going to different That is a more capacity, it's, um, it's a system that we deploy when we need more capacity, okay, but it's still, a, let's say, a low cost solution compared to the active and the digital DAS. On the next one, this is uh, the example, this is the Wanda Metropolitano in Madrid. 
Here we've got an active DAS solution with more than 30 sectors, more than 100 antennas in total to cover all the stadium. And also, the, we are also covering the pitch in case that there's a concert so we can uh, provide that uh, capacity, not only the coverage capacity, to the people who's listening to the music, who is attending to the concert, and they are in the, in the pitch. And the last example that I have that I want to show you is the Etihad Stadium. This is a digital dust solution. As I said before, on the left side, you can see what we call the base station hotel. We've got all the MNAOs connected there into our master unit. And then we've got different rings around the stadium in all the different uh, layers in the indoor areas, but also in the, <clears throat> in the, in the pitch and the sitting ball areas where we are providing that signal that the MNLs are giving us uh, on, the, on the base station hotel and to provide all this huge capacity with a digital dash. So I think that's it from my side, Esther. So I'll hand over to you now. Thank you, Victor. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, before moving on, um, let's remind you that uh, this is a live webinar. Okay, it seems that we have more than 200 people connected. So um, please uh, keep asking us questions using the uh, button uh, that you have at the bottom of, of, of your screens. Okay, so click the chat button and, and let us know your thoughts and, and comments. Okay, let's now um, address uh, how we at Telnex um, offer uh, this kind of, of, of solutions. Okay, as Victor have, uh, has just explained, uh, we offer uh, these indoor connectivity systems, or we have deployed these connectivity systems in uh, a wide um, range of, of venues. Okay, here at the right side of the, of the screen, uh, you can see the, let's say, the high density venues, uh, the venues with uh, uh, more uh, users uh, spending data and traffic on, on them. Okay, so these are, let's say, the venues where all stakeholders have an appetite in order to have good coverage and good capacity. So this will be, let's say, the, uh, the first uh, to be covered. Now, let's put it this way. On the left, hand of the of the screen you can see other um, areas that can have as well an appetite uh, to enhance uh, the connectivity to the end users but obviously um, less dense and then um, less interest no sometimes um, to 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 be covered uh, here um, uh, and here we have the two extremes okay for example let's put on the more hyper dense uh, side of of this light, the stadiums. Stadia is a natural hub, hub sorry, uh, for digital content creation. And then the brand awareness that having a good connectivity creates is huge. Then venue owners, the MNOs, have an interest to have a good coverage. If we go to a parking solution, for example, then the interest gets lower, okay? And sometimes it's more difficult to attract and the MNOs for it, for them to give us the signal, okay, to to repeat in this in this kind of venues, okay, and this uh, introduces how we at Telnex uh, approach uh, the market, okay. We are in the in the middle between the venue owners, the landlords, and the uh, mobile network operators, okay. We are a single point of contact in front of the venue owners, and we acting as neutral host put together all the MNOs, okay? We put them all together, as Victor was um, uh, mentioning before, on a multi-operator and sometimes multi-technology solution, okay? We from Felnex, uh, together with the MNOs and the venue owners, design the solution, we deploy the solution, and then we maintain and operate the systems, okay? The venue owners provide us the spaces, and also the energy to fit the system. And of course, we always follow their, let's say, access and security um, processes, okay? From the MNO uh, hand, and this is very important, 
they provide us the stigma, okay, for us to repeat into these systems. And this is very important because we, acting as neutral hosts, need the permission of the MNOs, uh, allowing us, let's put it this way, to repeat their signals, okay? So this happened in all countries. And also in some specific countries, and on top of this, the MNOs also put together some rules for us as a neutral host to follow. So this is the case of the judge, for example, in the UK and also in Netherlands. I don't know, Victor, if you can give us more insight on, on, on this kind of, of initiatives that we have to follow in order mm -hmm. for us to repeat the signal from the MNOs. Yeah, we're, we're seeing some, some, in some countries, the MNOs, they have these agreements, these, uh, like in the UK, the judge agreement, where they, they, they put, a, let's say, they put a kind of a, um, uh, specifications on, the, on how a neutral host needs to deploy uh, a system uh, for a multi-operator multi -operator system, basically. And that's, uh, that's very useful because in that case, so we can follow and then we, we know that we are fulfilling all the MNOs requirements because are written and agreed, which is the most important thing I would say, agreed for all the MNOs. And that, that's really useful in our case. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Okay, so um, again, uh, this is something uh, that happens um, in, in all the countries and we have to, to follow um, this approach, okay, uh, but on the other hand, um, is also uh, good because we can work together uh, with the MNOs to deploy this kind of, of, of solutions. Um, we are arriving at the at the end of the of the of the session. Um, now it's time maybe to reinforce um, why Telnex is an option to deploy this kind of solutions. Okay, so uh, we have already tackled some of the. Uh, our selling uh, propositions to the market. We are a neutral host, okay? We operate multi-operator and multi-technology solutions. We have a uh, great expertise and a uh, long uh, time uh, expertise uh, on our back, uh, a proven track record. Uh, Victor will show you um, afterwards um, different initiatives that we have already uh, deployed and show uh, the proven track record that, that, that we have. And, and obviously, uh, one um, of the most important things is our capacity to operate and maintain the systems. We at Telnex uh, have specific control centers, okay, that can help both MNOs and venue owners to keep the systems ready and to keep the systems updated to the very last technologies, okay, for all the period of our relationship with them. So uh, to uh, give you a more insight on our proven track record, um, I give you with, uh, with some images and, and with Victor as well. Yeah, thank you, Esther. So he, here there are some, some references, okay, from Cellnex. Uh, this is the stadium, this is the Etihad stadium that I was mentioning before, okay, with the digital dust solution. We've got also, um, again, a stadium. Uh, as I said before, we're covering the pitch. This is San Siro, which is in Milan. This is the Opera House in uh, Barcelona. We've got here, we've got a DAS solution, but also a Wi-Fi solution. We're deploying more than 50 Wi-Fi access points. This is shopping centers, which are key also, especially for all the benefits that the landlord can have. Skyscrapers, also we are deploying skyscrapers and I'm gonna show you at the end of this presentation uh, 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 a good case. Hospitals, this is the hospital in Verona. As you know, hospitals are key because technology is evolving every day more and more in the hospitals. And then we've got uh, a, a big track record also on underground like Milano, for example, stations, train stations at the central station in, uh, in Milan. And We've got also uh, tunnels uh, covered with uh, repeaters, as we were mentioning uh, at the very beginning. Um, we've got also Air Force. We are covering Air Force with uh, different solutions. We've got also city centers where we are deploying uh, Wi-Fi and we are deploying small cells. We've got a trial with a multi-operator small cells also here in Barcelona. And car parks, as we were mentioning before, because 
we are seeing that car park they need coverage not capacity but they need coverage to uh offer these new services smart city services so we've got more than 2300 nodes in overall in all europe and this is the last example that i, I really like this example to to share this with you this is uh, porta garibaldi in milano where we are we have one as i was mentioning before we've got one base station hotel in the middle okay here and from that base station hotel we are covering all those skyscrapers some of them are offices sorry because i think we had a problem with the with the slides if you can i'm not sure if you can go back jordi to the previous one but uh, i was okay so i was mentioning we've got porta garibaldi that and we are centralizing all the connectivity from the mnos in one single point and from there we are connecting all the different buildings, all the different skyscrapers, and also we could, uh, um, we can deploy uh, small cells in the outdoor area, which I think is a great example of a deployment of a DAS solution or small, small cell solution in a, in a city center. So Esther, that's it from my side. Uh, I'll hand over to you again, so thank you. Thank you, Victor. So um, let's start now with the, with the Q&A um, slot. Uh, let me check uh, first all the questions that, that we have received and we will try to answer um, to all of you. So um, first question comes from Ben. Ben, thank you um, uh, for uh, being um, one of the first sending questions. Okay, so the question um, uh, is if uh, can you start install repeaters in the in 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 the UK and also if we are or if it is okay to rebroadcast okay or do we need a specific license? So as uh, we have um, explained during the, the the presentation, we always always require permission from MNOs to repeat their signal. So we cannot deploy a system of this kind without having permission from the MNOs. Then, and, and Victor here, maybe you can give me a hand. Yeah. Then depending on the countries, depending on the countries, there are slight difference on the, on the kind of permission that, that we need. In some cases, yes, it is a license. And in some others, it's just an agreement between ourselves and uh, the mobile uh, network operator. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, but yeah. yes, but yes, we can install uh, uh, repeaters. Let uh, me, yeah, that. let me, let me give you just a, a flavor on that. So, UK, as we said, is a is a very specific. Uh, well, I would say, yeah, it's a different scenario. Maybe. No, normally, we need to we need to ask for this permission to deploy uh, small uh, repeaters. Sorry, to repeat the signal of the MNOs because, of course, we are taking their signal and we are repeating that, so they need to know where we are doing that. But again, in the UK, the MNOs they had um, they they have this judge coordination, and they release through the Ofcom. Ofcom is the regulator in the UK. They release um, a paper where you can uh, repeat a signal under certain circumstances. And that means that if the repeater uh, is, uh, is providing less than amount of output power, if you are repeating the signal of only one MNAO and only one channel, you can do that without telling to the MNAO, okay? And again, that's from the regulator, from the UK regulator, agreed with the MNOs, with the operators. And, and that, I would say that's a, that's a different scenario. So normally, as you said, Esther, we need to ask permission to the MNOs. And this is what we are doing when we are installing repeaters. Great, Victor, thanks for, for clarifying. Um, another question um, is about the ownership um, uh, of the systems um, in these uh, cases who owns and maintains the system. Okay, so uh, these are two different things, the ownership and, and the operation and maintenance. Uh, it depends on the business model, on the agreement that we enter both with the venue owner as well as, as with the MNOs, okay? So uh, sometimes we at Telnex, uh, as we invest and deploy the system, we own the system. 
and we own and maintain it, okay? Um, in, in, in other cases, it's the venue owner who wants to deploy this kind of solutions, okay? In that case, he can invest in the system, so the ownership belongs to the venue owner. Although, in terms of operation, as, as he can, or he needs, or he may need a third party to operate the system, we can maintain and operate the system. Then we enter into a service or operation agreement uh, with the venue owner. So again, it depends a lot on the kind of agreement that we close with the venue owner and the MNOs. And the range is very, very, very wide, okay? So hope that uh, uh, this is helpful. Uh, yeah, to let, let, this, this let, me add, let me attest it here that we've got Knox uh, at Celnex, and so we can operate and we can maintain the systems from our Absolutely. Knox. In, in, Absolutely. In, in every every country in Europe. Okay. Absolutely. Um, also, one of the questions. Uh, let me choose one related to, to technology. So yes. So we have uh, talked about multi-technology solutions. Okay. So there is a question about the readiness of the system to work together with private uh, private sorry um, corporate Wi-Fi networks. Okay. So, um, in some of the deployments uh, that we have uh, performed so far, our system coexists with Wi-Fi networks, okay, and then, and, and, and sorry, uh, sorry, and, and even uh, these two networks can be uh, complementary somehow. Not sure um, about the possibility to integrate from a technology point of view, Wi-Fi um, uh, with DAS or small cell solutions, uh, Victor. Yeah, we we've deployed we've deployed some venues with uh, with um, uh, let's say with uh, connectivity for for the for the for the MNOs, but also Wi-Fi. So, uh, for example, Wanda Metropolitan is one example where we are deploying this DAS system, huge DAS system, to provide a lot of capacity. But on top of that, we are also deploying Wi-Fi. Uh, the Opera House in Barcelona, Liceo, it's another example where we are deploying both technologies at the same time. Um, from which we are seeing that uh, most of the vendors are merging and are having this, uh, in some, some cases, this kind of partnerships. In some cases, we are seeing also some acquisitions from, from Dash companies to Wi-Fi companies. We are seeing this merging of both technologies. We understand that 5G is about connectivity in general, and that means that it could be a mobile connectivity with an NR, or it could be a Wi-Fi access point at the same time, aggregating all the traffic to provide a huge or higher capacity, regardless the technology. So the answer I would say is yes, we are deploying both technologies, and also we are seeing that uh, vendors are doing this kind of partnerships between DAS and uh, uh, Wi-Fi to offer uh, multi-technology in that sense. Thank you, Victor. Here we have another another question uh, that uh, somebody is asking us uh, about the uh, when we have a request for indoor connectivity, which is the percentage um, among DAS, small cell, or uh, Wi-Fi. Um, and um, I found this question interesting because. Um, um, the question is also if we have experienced any change, okay, in this uh, kind of request recently since uh, COVID-19 is affecting uh, to us. Uh, so, myself, um, I am I'm, I'm not able to respond to the percentage of, of this type of solutions. Um, Victor, if you have um, an answer to this, I'm more than happy. Um, otherwise, uh, we will keep this with us and, and can be uh, responding to your petition later on. Yeah, but let me what say, I, what I, yes, Victor, go, go, go sorry. ahead. Sorry, let, let me say only so, as a neutral host in an in building scenario, what we are deploying now, uh, I would say almost 100% is a DAS solution because DAS solution allows us to take the signal of all the MNOs in one single uh, system and, the, and, and then spread that signal into the different uh, locations of the venue. Small cells, we are seeing a lot of deployments of small cells, but normally these are in a single operator. 
So operators are deploying small cells because uh, it's where they, they feel more comfortable and they don't need a DAS solution. So DAS is mainly needed when you need to combine different operators at the same time. Okay, moving oh, okay. forward. Sorry, just one, one last thing. Moving forward, we're seeing a huge merging again on, the, on those technologies. DAS and a small cell are moving and are merging into one, uh, one single thing. So in the future, we're expecting to deploy a lot of small cells. Okay, so then does this mean that maybe in the future, um, small cell uh, will uh, evolve um, to a multi-operator scenario? Well, what I'm trying to say is that DAS and small cells for in building a scenarios will merge into a kind of same technology. So when we're talking, I was talking before about digital DAS. So digital DAS is moving into this kind of uh, a small cell distributed small cell technology. When I was talking about virtualization is one step further to have one single unit uh, as a base one which could be multi-operator because it's easily uh, uh, can be multi-operator and that will be fit, fed into a kind of DAS system uh, through the fiber, through the Ethernet in this digital world. So what I'm saying is that it's not that it's, DAS will not exist and it will be small cells. What I'm saying is that it will be a merge of both technologies into one, uh, one single technology. Yeah? Okay, thank That's you. Small um, cell technology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so again, um, in the case uh, that you need further clarifications uh, to one of our answers, um, please uh, do not hesitate uh, to uh, pose us uh, questions at our email. Okay, marketing at nextelecom.com. Okay, it's available. It's available at our website. Um, we have more questions. Okay, and and, and one uh, that is uh, very interesting. Um, when we deploy, well, we have a couple of three uh, tackling the same um, the same aspect. Okay, when we deploy um, DAS or small cell systems, even if these small cell systems are indoor. We, at Fairness, we do not own the frequencies, okay? So spectrum is always um, an asset that belongs to the MNOs, okay? So we repeat the signals, but do not own the, the frequencies. Uh, we have uh, here another question uh, that will be as well, um, maybe um, uh, difficult no? to, to, to get it answered very precisely, that is how many MNOs are required for a neutral cost DAS solution uh, for it to be profit, uh, profitable, okay? So again, uh, it will depend a lot on the uh, relationship, on the, on the business model that we close uh, with the MNOs as well as uh, with, the, with the venue owner, okay? Um, so there is no, a minimum number of MNOs uh, required for a solution to be provided. Again, it will be on how we invest, okay, and how we uh, manage the um, operation of the system. Um, what, what is important to, to reinforce is that sometimes the profitability of these solutions does not come only uh, from the deployment of the system itself, as we were mentioning at the very beginning, it, the profitability sometimes it uh, comes from the collaterals that having a system of this kind of this kind um, can give us. Okay, there are plenty of benefits. Okay, and the venue owner can maximize revenues having a solution of this kind, not because the having uh, the, the underlying connectivity system, but because the, they can deploy other applications on top of. Okay, then they they can better marketing their end users, okay? For the MNO, um, having a better coverage in some specific areas uh, will give uh, them more traffic, okay? So again, the MNOs, they have as well um, to address their internal business plans properly. So it's not a direct and, and, and easy question no, to, to, to answer. It will depend a lot on the, on the business model. Okay, so um, uh, I think that um, it's, it's time, okay, to, to close the session. Um, again, uh, we will be more than happy uh, to uh, keep 
uh, in touch with you uh, uh, by, by mean of, of, of our um, typical channels, okay? Email and again, marketing at uh, tenextelecom.com. Esther, sorry, that's the last Esther? question that I would like to answer, if I may. Yes, Yeah. absolutely. So, yeah, so someone is asking, so for stadium solution where concerts are occasionally held on the pitch, as we were, yeah, we were mentioning that, is the task configuration change for these events to manage the difference in capability for the sectors? And if so, whose responsibility on this? So yeah, I, I like this question. So the, the answer is yes, of course, we need to we need to change the configuration of the DAS system. So uh, um, as you might imagine, um, the, 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 the antennas that are covering the pitch may, may have some interference with the antennas which are covering the people who might be sitting on the, um, on the, uh, on the sitting bowl, basically on the seats. So what we are doing normally, the, the antennas covering the pitch are off when there's a, a, a football match or there's a game. So when the pitch is not used, uh, for the people is used for the sports those antennas are off when we are when there's a concert and then people can go to the pitch what we are doing is we are switching off the antennas that are covering the um, uh the, the concert where the where the concert where the where the group is is playing and we are activating those antennas to cover the pitch okay this is something that let's say is under Cell next responsibility is something that we are managing from our uh, uh, operation operational group from our NOC. But of course, uh, is something that we are doing together with the MNO. So we are fully synchronized or fully aligned with the MNO's needs. And we, when we do these changes, normally these changes are done uh, in summer during the summer period. Uh, we are doing that together with the MNO. Thank you, Esther. Okay, excellent, Victor. So um, now, yes, uh, we are arriving at the end of, of our time. Uh, again, we will be more than happy uh, to keep in touch with you uh, by means of our um, normal channels. Okay, you can use our email address, marketing at telecom.com, um, in order to uh, post further questions to us or even um, asking us uh, to put you through our uh, network of experts um, in each of the, of the countries, okay? Thank you very much uh, for being with us today. Again, a live session uh, from home um, to all of you. More than 300 people connected, so thank you. And see you on the next one, that will be the 26th of May, same time, and we will be talking about uh, smart solutions. Thank you very much. You take care, bye. Thank you. Bye. La ópera siempre ha sido históricamente un espectáculo para poca gente y el comunicarnos, el abrirnos a mucha más gente nos posiciona mucho más cerca de esta, que es lo que queremos, acercarnos a, a mucha más gente de la que hasta ahora podía entrar en un teatro de ópera. Valoramos muy positivamente nuestra colaboración con Celnes Telecom. Saba ha realizado recientemente una firme apuesta por la digitalización de su negocio y para ello entendemos que es clave establecer relaciones y alianzas con proveedores tecnológicos de referencia como es Telnex. Desde el club queremos que un evento en el Wanda Metropolitano gire alrededor de la conectividad. Para ello la calidad de la conexión que hemos conseguido con el proyecto de DAS de Celnex es un punto clave.